Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Last time we took a look at extremely detailed 3D prints made from resin from the Nobel 1.0A. Today we're going to compare these prints to the same prints made on your more traditional filament based 3D printers. So let's get to it. Now, if you haven't seen my last video, we took a look at how SLA printers work by curing resin with a UV laser and basically pulls an object out of a vat of resin. This results in very detailed prints. So I wanted to compare some of these prints with models printed in PLA on my filament based printer. These work by melting plastic and building it up layer by layer, but they usually don't handle small detailed objects very well. Think of using a hot glue gun. The glue needs to be melted in order to be extruded, but if you were to try to build up a mound of hot glue, you would have to wait for the previous layers to solidify before printing the next. The filament printer has the same issue with small objects. There just isn't enough time for the layers to cool before it moves on to the next. Now I printed all of these objects at the same time and with the cooling fan on high in order to give the layers the most time to cool. This is the best case scenario for the filament based 3D printer. Let's start with the miniatures. These two models are designed for tabletop RPGs and fit within a one inch grid system. Right off the bat, you can see the differences in the details between the resin prints and the filament prints. The edges of the mage's armor are more crisp in the resin. The sphere is smoother, the fingers actually exist, and the face has just a lot more detail. The mimic's teeth are much more defined and there is no gap at the top of the model on the resin prints. And also this brings us to the support material. The supports on the filament prints are much more substantial, which makes them harder to remove from the internal cavity of the mimic. There's also much more material supporting the arms of the mage. The resin supports are more delicate and much easier to remove, especially if you remove them before post curing the resin. If you are aiming for printing for tabletop minis, the resin printer is what you're looking for. Next up, we have an artistic sculpture, the Bearded Yell. This is one of my favorites due to the model being extremely detailed. Compare the individual strands of hair, the braid running from the top of the head, and even embossing details on the side of the pedestal. The filament printer puts up a good fight and is definitely not what I'd consider a bad print. It's just that the fine details are smoothed out by the plastic. Next up is the ball jointed articulated octopus. I was actually surprised that my filament printer could print these. I thought maybe the arm segments would be a little too small, but it turned out not to be the case. I did have to clean up the bottom of each segment individually with an X-Acto knife on the filament prints. So that was a little time consuming. However, both prints turned out pretty good. The backside of the filament print was a little misshapen and the build lines are a little bit more pronounced, but both are acceptable. The joints in the filament prints have a little tighter tolerance, resulting in a less fluid feeling motion, but that also means you can erase them in a pose and they are more likely to stay. And finally, we have the Eiffel Tower prints. At 100 millimeters tall, the struts on the resin prints are less than 0.2 millimeters thick near the top. That is too small for the 0.4 millimeter nozzle of the filament printer, so that would be impossible to print at that scale. I had to scale it up by 35% to even get the slicer to generate a printable file. And even so, some features were still too small to print, such as the railing around the main level. The filament printer didn't stand a chance with this model. The design resulted in large amounts of stringing, even on a relatively well-tuned machine. None of the lines are crisp, features are missing, and the top is more of a glob of plastic than anything else. The resin print, however, in stark contrast, is a print of perfection. Even the smallest detail was no problem. Clean edges with no missing features. I hope I was able to showcase the differences between prints from a filament-based 3D printer and a resin-based SLA printer. Both printers are amazing pieces of technology, but like any tool, they have their own sets of problems they are designed to solve. So let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. And if you haven't seen my previous video where I showcase a few more examples of prints from the Nobel 1.0A, you can find that here. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming full review of the Nobel 1.0A. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.